This video is brought to you by Sailrite. We're going to transform this boat's old salon cushions from this to these beautiful cushions. And we're going to show you how to make your own salon cushions using supplies and fabrics from Sailrite. If you use a professional to sew up all of your salon cushions, you could spend thousands. Do it yourself and save. Angela from the Sailrite Loft is going to show you how it's done. We've decided to reuse the old foam, so here we're going to remove the cushion cover. And then when we removed the cover, we found that there was a polyester batting that had been wrapped on the polyurethane foam. We're going to remove the polyester batting because it's in pretty bad shape. You notice here it's been hand stitched with a single stitch approximately every six inches. Typically polyester batting is glued to the foam. We're going to replace the polyester batting with new batting which will plump up the cushions and give the edges a little rounded look. We're going to cut the polyester batting to size so that it overlays the edges by about two to three inches. We'll be sandwiching the foam between the polyester batting. And here on this edge, Angela is working and going to cut the excess polyester batting away. This is where the zipper will be installed to insert the foam in a later step. And we don't really want the polyester batting to get in the way of the zipper. That's why we don't sandwich it on that end. Here at the corners, she's rounding the corners. We're going to glue this polyester batting to the foam. So we're going to use the 3M Super 77 spray adhesive here. And we're going to lightly spray the foam and also the polyester batting so that it sticks in place. So when it comes to inserting the foam into the cushion cover when it's done, it is an easy task and the polyester batting won't shift around when the cushion is being used. We've glued it on this one side and once it's uh, stuck down right where Angela wants it, she'll turn the uh, foam over and glue the other side just as she did here. We'll not be showing gluing the polyester batting to the other side of the foam. We're also going to apply some spray glue to the sides and stick the polyester batting down there as well. Do not be alarmed if the polyester batting does not stick exceptionally well to the sides. We just want it to stay where it's at once it's inserted in the cover. And typically the cover will hold it in place. Let's move on. We're building salon cushions here and there, are, like with any project, there are multiple ways to do it. In this particular case, we have existing cushions and we want to use the existing foam. So the simple approach is to pattern from the existing foam to create our cushion casings. And that's the approach that we're going to follow in this video. However, if you don't have any foam and you need to create patterns from the place that the cushions will sit, what you should do is you should watch uh, the videos that we have done on cockpit cushions and follow those steps to prepare cushions essentially from scratch. Before we move on, let's take a look at the anatomy of a cushion. You can see here that we have a top and bottom plate and boxing strips that cover each side of the cushion. Then in back we have what is called the zipper plaque boxing. It contains a zipper which the foam can be inserted into the cushion cover. However, you can build cushions with a single length of boxing for the three sides and a separate zipper plaque boxing in the rear. In this video, we're going to be building a cushion using separate strips of boxing per side. Why? Because we can join up the stripes along the two long sides by doing it this way. We've taken this foam with the newly wrapped polyester back to the boat and positioned it in our salon. We've already made the back rests. The process for making those cushions is done exactly as what will be shown in this video. The reason we made those backrests first is because we have to line up the stripes. Our fabric that we've chosen is a umbrella upholstery fabric and it has stripes. So here Angela has taken some scrap fabric, placed double sided seam stick to the back side and based it on top of the polyester batting so that the stripes will line up once all the cushions are done. Now we can take that foam back to the loft floor and start making the covers. We're going to take measurements directly from this rectangular foam cushion. 
Since the foam includes batting wrap, we need to apply slight compression during measuring. Here we're getting about 20 inches. Now we need to measure across its length. We'll do the same process. Apply slight compression since it's wrapped in polyester. So here's where the yardstick or ruler would begin and then we'll go all the way to the other side keeping that ruler in the exact same spot and apply pressure there we get 58 inches. Here's another cushion that is not exactly rectangular so it is more difficult to take measurements from the foam. So here we are laying it on top of a fabric plate and then we trace around the sides. Since the cushion has batting wrap we are trying to keep the pencil up against the edge to make the plate slightly smaller than the size of the cushion with the wrap. If we did not have the batting on our foam, we would simply mark up against the foam edge, not pushing the pencil in towards the foam. Remember, when you sew the boxing onto the plates in a future step, we'll be taking up 3 8 inch seam allowance all around the plate. Thus, the plate will always be smaller than the foam size, which is exactly what we want. At this corner there is a cutout for an obstacle. Here Angela is marking around the cutout in the foam. If you haven't traced around the foam, be sure to write the measurements down you took earlier. To determine the width of the boxing, we need to take the foam's width. And our foam has a polyester batting wrapped to it. So let's wrap this batting around the foam and take a yardstick and measure it. We need to apply slight pressure to the assembly and take the measurement with the pressure applied. It's about 5 inches. We will first mark out the boxing strips. Take the measurement of the foam you just took and add between a quarter inch and three quarter inch. Keep in mind that thinner cushions look best with more allowance added and thicker cushions look best with less. For our cushion with polyester batting, we've decided to add a half inch. So we're marking out five and a half inches for the width of our boxing. To determine the width of the zipper plaque boxing, use the boxing width you just determined but also add the total width of the zipper to that measurement. Our boxing was five and a half inches, the width of our zipper was one and a quarter inches, so we need to cut the zipper plaque boxing to six and three quarter inches. You can see that Angela is making several strips of boxing for this cushion. How many strips, or what is the length of boxing required, is determined easily. We're going to show you that next. Since our cushion has stripes and we want to try to match up the boxing stripes with the plate stripes for the two long sides of the cushion, we've decided to use separate boxing strips per each side of the cushion. To do this, take general measurements of the three sides of the cushion that will just have plain boxing and a measurement of the side which will include the zipper plaque boxing. Again, since we have stripes, we will need this required length of boxing to be slightly longer to include for a fudge factor to line up the stripes. That fudge factor will always be dependent on the stripes or pattern repeat, if you're trying to line it up with the plate. Our cushion's required length is 58 inches, and our fabric is only 54 inches wide, so we will need to join another 54 inch panel to this panel to make the length of the plate required. This means our top plate will have a seam in it. The only way to avoid this seam is to run the stripes along the length, or to pick a railroaded fabric from Sailrite. Now that we know the width and the length and the size of the plate, all we need to do is mark our fabric to the correct size and then cut them out. Angela uses a shortcut to create the extra boxing and top plate length required. Basically, her process saves time eliminating duplicating measuring. Next, she will cut both lengths A and B. Our cushion will use another fabric for the bottom plate. So we're going to leave that out for a future step. So here Angela has already marked the boxing on this one panel and also the plate itself as far as the width. She rolls out more fabric, takes a measurement of that, and then transfers that measurement to the second panel. So here she'll have two panels that she can cut out and sew together. So here's where she needs to cut the fabric apart to create the second panel. Sunbrella upholstery fabric should be cut with a hot knife. This will prevent the unraveling of the edge of the fabric. Here we're using the Sailrite Edge Hot Knife. This is a complete package. Wonderful tool. You should order it at Sailrite. Notice that as we cut the fabric, we're cutting on top of a metal ruler. This will prevent damage to the tabletop below. 
Now we'll cut the two panels apart at that center line. This will now give us two panels, one with the boxing width and the plate marked on it and the other without. Now all we need to do is sew those two panels together. When lining up the panels, you need to be sure your stripes or patterns line up perfectly. Then turn the assembly so the outside surfaces are facing each other. So they're lined up perfectly. And the stripes line up exactly how they need to, so they continue on from one panel to the next. Does this mean the stripes will line up with each other? No, not typically. When you're matching up stripes, they will often be offset of each other so that the pattern repeats exactly the same from one side to the next. Now we'll take these two panels to the sewing machine and sew them together at that point. Angela has decided not to use double-sided seam stick and she's not going to pin it in place. She's going to carefully guide the fabric so the stitch is in the right spot. She's going to set her sewing machine to approximately a 5 millimeter straight stitch, which is not too short and not too long. It will prevent puckering of the fabric and it will also hold the panels together well when they're completed. Now she's ready to sew. She's going to confirm that the fabric is resting right where it needs to be. Then she'll sew a few inches and confirm again. She'll do this slowly and methodically all the way down the width of this cushion. For your information, we're using the Sarite 111 sewing machine with the MCSCR power system. In this video, we're sewing this cushion together with Tanara thread, which is totally UV proof thread. Now, salon cushions typically aren't in the sun, so you could use a V69 polyester thread from Sarite as well. Let's skip ahead here. Here you can see some of the marks we made for the plate or the boxing underneath on that first panel. We'll be transferring those marks to the second panel coming up next. Here we are coming to the end. Once we've created this stitch, we're going to stop. We are not going to sew a top stitch. We want this to be basically almost invisible. As we pull them apart here, this is what they'll look like when it's installed on the cushion. Now we're going to cut away some of the excess material approximately a quarter inch away from the stitch line. And again, we're going to use a Sarite Edge hot knife on top of a metal ruler to prevent damage to the tabletop below and to prevent the unraveling of the Sumbrella upholstery fabric. We only have marks for the boxing, the zipper plaque boxing, and also the top plate on the first panel. So now we're going to transfer those marks to the second panel that we just sewed on. When transferring these marks, be sure the fabric is laying flat and it's also straight. To confirm that everything is nice and straight, she's going to take a measurement from that first mark and then strike a line on the second panel. Go ahead and transfer all the marks for the boxing and the plates. We only have one plate as we're going to use a different fabric for the bottom plate. Remember back at the beginning of this video when we were on the boat and we used that scrap fabric to line up the back cushion with the bottom cushion. So now all we have to do to line up the stripes is take our fabric and lay it on top of the foam with that strip already adhered down. Ooh, here they're not lined up right. We need to turn the fabric the other direction. Position the fabric as close to the end as possible while still lining up all the stripes. That way you get the best cloth usage. Once it's in position, we can take a pencil and mark the ends. We're going to use that ruler here to confirm that our foam is the right size. For us, it was 58 inches. So here is the mark on this end of the cushion's length. And then now let's go to the other end. And at 58 inches, here's where the mark goes there. Now our stripes should be lined up with the backrest that's already on the boat. Since the boxing strips and plate were positioned directly under one another, 
This means lining up the stripes for the front and rear boxing strips is not required. They will be cut along the same plane, making that task already complete for our cushion. Nice. As Angela is determining where to cut, she's being sure that the fabric is laying nice and flat and the stripe is straight. Then she strikes a line with her pencil on the fabric. She did this here and she'll also do it to the other end where she marked the fabric at the correct length. Then we'll cut along those lines that she struck down on the fabric with the Sayrite Edge Hot Knife. After it's cut out, now we can cut the boxing strips and the zipper plaque boxing strip out. We'll use that Sayrite Edge Hot Knife yet again. Here's the hot knife going over the seam. The hot knife cut right through the fabric, but as we pull the fabric apart, you'll notice it does not come apart. That's because we use Tanara thread, which is totally UV proof and is very difficult to cut with a hot knife. You have to use scissors. Now we have the top plate and the two boxing strips for the front and the rear portion of our cushion. Now all we need to do is take some of the excess fabric and cut boxing for the two sides, which will be equal to the side lengths. We've decided not to install piping on this salon cushion. If you choose to install piping to either the top plate or if you want to install it even onto the bottom plate, now is the time to do so. If you want to see an example of how to sew piping onto cushions, I suggest that you watch the cockpit cushion video available at Sailrite. Most of our cushions are not flippable, so we're going to be using a cushion underlining fabric for the bottom side of our cushion. This is a great fabric because it breathes nicely, and it's a vinyl fabric, so it stays in place. Here we're marking it to the correct size for the bottom plate, which is exactly the same size as our top plate. And then we'll cut it out with scissors. There's no reason to use a hot knife, for this fabric does not unravel. To make our zipper plaque, we're going to cut a length of zipper that's approximately the entire length of our cushion minus a few inches on each end. There's no right or wrong length to cut the zipper, you just want it big enough to insert the foam. Now we have every plate and every boxing strip and even the zipper plaque ready to sew together. First we're going to create a tack stitch, so we're going to set our stitch length to the maximum stitch length. On this machine it's 8 millimeters. This stitch will eventually be ripped out. Then we'll fold our zipper plaque assembly in half lengthwise, being sure the outside surfaces are out, inside surfaces are facing each other. We'll then take our zipper, place it on top of the fold so the teeth are centered on the fold, and mark where the edge of the zipper tape is. Next, we'll take this over to the sewing machine and create a straight stitch right where that mark was placed. There's no need to do reversing, though Angela does a little bit here. We're using the deluxe 5.5 inch magnetic guide here to position the stitch at the exact spot all the way down the length. This magnetic guide acts like a fence on a table saw, guiding your project down the entire length. Our cushion had to have a seam to join two panels together. Here, Angela's going to be sure that the seam is laying flat as she sews across it here. When that's done, we'll take scissors and cut along the fold all the way down the length of the zipper plaque boxing. Do this carefully so as to cut along the fold, but uh, if you're off a little bit, it'll probably be okay in the end. Next, we'll splay open the portion that we just cut and lay the zipper on top of that and sew it in place on top of this boxing strip. We'll do a little bit of reversing at the beginning here because we're not going to start our zipper right on the edge of the zipper plaque boxing. We're going to start it a few inches in. The longer the zipper, the easier it is to insert the foam. However, typically we don't run the zipper all the way to the end of the zipper plaque boxing. When the zipper is placed in position, be sure to do a little bit of reversing at the beginning to lock the stitch in place. Then carefully splay open the portion that was uh, tack stitched down and center the teeth as you sew it onto the zipper plaque boxing. Be sure to center the teeth on top of the tack stitch. You'll notice the presser foot is up against the zipper's teeth. 
And as we get to the junction where the seam was sewn to sew the two panels together, we're going to carefully sew over that so it's laying nice and flat. When we get to the other side, we want to do some reversing there at the end of the zipper and then do reversing at the end of the zipper plaque as well. Now we'll turn the whole assembly around so we work from the other end. Doing this keeps our zipper on the same side of the presser foot and so we can just guide the teeth up alongside the uh, presser foot again keeping that stitch in exactly the same spot and since the zipper is tacked down we can go quickly there. Here it is complete. Now we'll rip open our stitches but we do not want to rip open the stitches right at the end of the zipper. Leave about an inch or so and then start ripping the tack stitch that we sewed down earlier with a seam ripper. Be careful not to rip your fabric. Now we'll pull the teeth apart and install the slider so that the puller is facing the outside of the fabric. Fat ends get started down first. You want to put the slider on so that the two ends of the zipper are started approximately at the same time. If you've never done this before, it will take some patience. Once it's in position, just pull the slider into place and it zips onto the teeth. We'll take some scrap fabric and cut two strips. These two strips will be positioned on the back side of our zipper with a fold towards the teeth, as shown here in the video. This will help to secure the ends of the zipper and our zipper plaque boxing in place so it will not easily come apart here past the zipper. We'll do some reversing here and do the same thing on the other side, placing our stitch directly on top of the previous stitch. Then when we get to the actual zipper with the teeth, we're going to sew across the teeth and into the teeth. So be careful that your needle does not deflect here and reverse several times. This will lock the slider onto the uh, zipper so it will not come off. Here's the top side and here's what the bottom side looks like. We've sewn right through the zipper teeth. Follow that same procedure on the opposite end and now our zipper plaque is complete. To join the boxing together, it's always a good idea to lay it out on a table next to the plate in the appropriate spot. Then you can take each one of the strips and lay it on top of the strips so the outside surfaces are facing each other. Then we'll take it to a sewing machine and sew a stitch 3 8 inch away from the edge of the fabric. We're going to use the magnetic guide here to keep that stitch 3 8 inch away from the edge. Reverse at the beginning and also at the end. Be sure the outside surfaces are facing each other. Now we'll take this back over to our plate again and be assured that we're joining up the correct edge and the correct side of the boxing. So here we're going to take our zipper plaque boxing and lay it on top so the outside surfaces are facing each other and do that same procedure to the end, joining it to the other boxing strips. Now we'll just join up the end by placing the outside surfaces toward each other and sewing 3 eighths of an inch there as well. Now that our boxing is sewn together, we can grab the top plate and sew it to the boxing. You'll want to lay the top plate with the outside surface facing up, but you also want to be sure that the stripes are lined up perfectly. Here they're not lined up well. You can see that here. So we're going to reverse the boxing around so that it lines up as it should. The zipper plaque goes in the back. Now let's see if the stripes line up the way they should. Yes, they do, and the seam is directly across from it that we put in to join the two panels together. We're going to start here at our corner, and we are going to line up the fabric by hand here. So the uh, stitch, the 3 8 inch stitch joining the boxing, is exactly 3 8 inch away from the corner if you use the edge of the fabric as a guide. 
So we're going to start a couple inches away from that corner, being sure that the stripes are lined up. We're starting on the front side of the cushion, and we want to sew 3 8 inch inside the edge of the fabric. Reverse at the beginning to lock your stitch in place. And we'll need to sew a 6 millimeter stitch length approximately. As Angela is sewing, she's being careful that the stripes are lined up perfectly, so she's not pulling or stretching one fabric more than the other. We want the stripes to line up exactly across from each other as we sew this front portion of the cushion. Here's where we seam the two panels together, and she'll just make sure that that lays flat as she sews over it. If you'd like, you could use a quarter inch basting tape or seam stick for canvas to pre-base this prior to sewing. We'll be showing that a little bit later on. We want to show going around one corner. You'll want to do this around the entire perimeter of the cushion, but uh, we want to show the corner more than anything else because we want to show you how to get around a corner. Here, if you've done everything right, that corner of the boxing where it's joined together with the opposite boxing strip should lay about 3 8 inch away from the edge of the fabric. So she will sew up to where she joined the boxing together, bury her needle over top of that stitch, and then she'll lift her presser foot, roll the fabric around, lower her presser foot, and then continue to sew down the opposite leg. That's how a corner's done on a cushion. When sewing this side, we cannot use the stripes to be sure that they line up because they run the opposite direction. So Angela's going to go to the corner of the application and then make sure that she is walking that side into the sewing machine so that the corner will land right where she wants it to land. So here she's ensuring the corner is going to stop right where she wants it and she's not pulling or stretching one panel more than the other and sews to that corner. Follow this procedure all the way around the cushion. We'll not be showing any more of this. When you're done sewing, here's what it looks like on the outside. Everything's lined up and looks great. We want to show the use of using seam stick to pre-baste everything in place and then take it to the sewing machine and sew. So this is a different cushion, not the same cushion. And here you can see we're using a quarter inch seam stick for canvas and basting it around the entire perimeter of our plate. That way we can baste the boxing exactly where we want it to be. It is a good idea to only use a quarter inch basting tape for canvas, especially for Sunbrella upholstery fabric and Sunbrella uh, marine grade fabric. If you use anything wider, it is possible that you may sew into the seam stick. And if you sew into the seam stick, the glue will be exposed on the outside of the cover, which is not good because it'll catch dirt. So make sure you purchase the quarter inch seam stick for canvas from Sailrite. As you can see, all we do is base the boxing in the appropriate location. In doing this, we're assured that the stripes are going to line up, and we're also assured that the corners will line up perfectly. So if you're a little bit hesitant about how you're going to sew the boxing onto the plates, use the quarter-inch basting tape or seam stick for canvas from Sailrite. Once it's all basted in place, now we can just take it to the sewing machine and we don't even have to hesitate sewing. We can just sew as fast as we like because we know everything is in exactly the right spot. And here's a look at the finished piece after using the seam stick on the outside surface. Looks great. Alright, we're back to our original cushion here and now we need to install the bottom plate. To do this, we'll take the top plate assembly, turn it so that its outside surface is facing the outside surface of the bottom plate. And here we're using the cushion underlining material for the bottom plate. And all we need to do is sew 3 8 inch away from the raw edge and sew around the perimeter just as we did when we sewed the boxing to the top plate. You need to make sure the corners are lined up before you start sewing and we started a few inches away from one of the corners and we're sewing down the side that includes the zipper plaque boxing. 
because we have no stripes to ensure that everything's lining up perfectly, Angela's going to go all the way to the corner and walk it up from the corner to ensure that she's not pulling one fabric more than the other. If she were off and the corner was not going to line up, you can actually pull or stretch one fabric as you sew so that it will line up. In doing this, you can sometimes make adjustments up to about a quarter inch, but if you don't do it along the entire length of the panel, more than likely you'll have wrinkles when you're done. So only do this gradually, otherwise it can be a disaster. All right, we're gonna skip ahead here to the end and it is all sewn together. Now she's gonna separate the teeth by pulling the slider down and that opens up the cover and then she's gonna turn it right side out. Be sure that you push all the corners out with your hand. It is important to do that before stuffing the foam into the cover. Here's what it looks like when we're done. Now all we have to do is stuff the foam into the cover. We'll remove that scrap fabric that we used to line up the stripes and now we're going to use a cushion wrap silk film. This is a centerfold piece that is 27 inches and then when we unfold it it's 54 inches. This is a noiseless plastic silk film that makes cushion stuffing easy. We're going to use two layers of this for our cushion to ensure that it covers it completely. We want to make sure that we cover the foam and have at least 6 inches to 12 inches overhang on all sides except for obviously at the folded edge. So here we're unfolding the material so that it lays 54 inches wide. Then we'll place our foam on top of the silk film and then wrap it around it like a taco. Then we'll do that with our second sheet as well, making sure the overlap is at least 6 to 12 inches in the center and on all sides except for the folded edge. This plastic, known as silk film and also easy film, really does feel like a silk fabric and it is completely noiseless so you won't notice that it's inside your cushion when the cushion cover is installed. A few benefits to using the silk film. It acts as a moisture barrier for outdoor cushions, so it helps to prevent water from seeping into the foam, and it's also great for compressing the foam to make it easy to install the cover. Here we're using a shop vac, and we've placed the shop vac inside the silk film so that it contacts only the, film, the foam itself. And then notice how the foam shrinks. It shrinks by sometimes up to 70% depending on the density of the foam. Once it's shrunk, all we have to do is insert the cover over it. It makes it very easy to stuff foam inside of cushion covers. If the foam is a low density foam, meaning very soft, you may find that when sitting on a cushion wrapped in silk film, they may balloon up and then slowly deflate. This may require you to unwrap a portion of the silk film from the cushion to allow the air to escape quickly and avoid the ballooning effect. If this happens, we recommend uncovering a portion along the back zippered opening of the cushion or on the underside. Notice how easy it was to stuff the foam inside the cover because of its uh, compression. And now we'll just wait for the air to escape from the silk film and this will allow the foam to come back to its normal shape. While we're waiting we want to be sure the cover is located right where we want it to be so Angela is making adjustments to be sure that the edges of the cover are perfectly aligned with the foam inside. Hopefully now you have all the skills necessary to build your own salon cushions. Obviously this video is excellent for any other types of cushions, whether it be in the inside of your home or an outdoor living space. We have multiple 
cushions to make for Jim Grant's Islander 37 sailboat. So after Angela's done making all those cushions, we're going to give you a short little clip to show you each one of those cushions on the sailboat. Be sure to visit Sailrite to pick out your favorite boat interior fabric. We have hundreds of styles and colors in stock, ready to ship. We also stock all the supplies and foams you may want to use. A detailed material list is coming up and also a cushion making checklist which should help guide you when you're sewing up your own cushions. Here's the materials list of the items that we use to sew up these cushions and also the tools that were used. You'll find hundreds of fabrics that are available for salon cushions and other cushions as well at the Sailrite website. For salon cushions, Sailrite recommends using a umbrella upholstery or furniture fabric. When it comes time for you to build your own cushion, use this helpful checklist which should walk you through each one of the steps that are required for building a salon cushion. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sailrite website or subscribe to the Sailrite YouTube channel today. It's your loyal patronage to Sailrite that makes these free videos possible. Thanks for your loyal support. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sailrite, thanks for watching this video.